Hi, my name is Paul Cruz, and um, I'm an urban beekeeper. Um, the other things that uh, define me, I guess, are uh, I'm a, a mediator for the Canadian Human Rights Commission, I'm a conflict resolution trainer, uh, I'm a permaculture design um, person, uh, I'm an arborist, I'm a dad of five kids. Yeah, and beekeeping and urban beekeeping has been something that uh, my wife Heather and I have been doing for the last four years. I keep bees for two reasons. One is for their honey. Um, they're very generous. I think nature is very generous. Um, they, they store an enormous amount of honey, um, most of which they don't eat. Um, and so um, I, I used to worry that maybe we're taking away their winter food, but um, what we found is that um, they, like squirrels, will store much more than they could ever use in the winter. And so we use that um, and we eat healthy honey all year long. Uh, the other reason I beekeep is because I think they're really lovely animals to be around. Not animals, they're insects. But um, uh, they have really interesting ways of being and, and um, uh, interacting with each other and they, of course they pollinate. Um, so that feels like a really good reason to, to have bees, especially in an urban environment where uh, pollinators are um, uh, in a shortage. Uh, my name is Chris Kirouac and I am part of an organization called Bee Project and we, main, we install and maintain hives around the city of Winnipeg and one of our main goals uh, is to engage urbanites in discussions around uh, food production, food security, and sort of like the, the wonder of, of nature but how we also have to protect that and foster uh, the environment um, in order to be able to continue to rely on it like we do. Uh, we believe that it's important for urbanites to have an idea of where their food comes from um, and to have an idea of some of the issues that our food system faces and what we rely on to have food, uh, access to food. So we believe that uh, the engagement mentally for people is very important to, so seeing something is not just seeing is believing, but it's also, uh, you know the saying, sorry, out of sight, out of mind, that's very problematic when issues aren't in sight. So if it's issues, anything around the world, that's a, a major challenge. Often in Canada, we're sort of sheltered from the immediacy of the need to, to act or react. Um, and so with bees, in the city, people see the hive, they think to themselves, oh, there's bees and pollinators and birds and stuff in this area. Um, and so then they're more engaged in, well, how can I be bee friendly or how can I promote some habitat around here? Um, part of the urban beekeeping and why Bee Project worked really hard at getting bylaw changes to permit it in the city was that philosophically we believe that you should be able to produce food where you're living, um, especially with uh, the new sort of style of immigrating to Canada um, and the where you instead of getting a homestead and doing putting down roots on a agricultural area you move right to a big city and you may lose completely any connection with food production or, or uh, gardening and anything like that even if they were traditions that you did for generations back home um, so that's a challenge and then the urbanization of Canada where we have you know more than 80% of urban of Canadians living as urbanites there's a huge power of voting uh, policy of purchasing power a big misunderstanding of what people of people have about honeybees is that they're just um, for honey production and that I would say is is um, the sort of like lower not their main purpose for people I mean the main purpose for people would be the pollination services if you will that they give us so our fruits and vegetables many of them are um, rely on sort of like their flowers to be fertilized by another flower using the bee as the vector for the pollen and so they're really engaging in in food production for us or the pollination uh, services is what the main thing is. The bees are uh, dangerous. Um, I think that's probably one of the things that kept the laws from getting put in place in Winnipeg for a while, um, which are which are now in place. But uh, I think the, 
the fear of bees is quite real for people. One of the things that I do uh, with my kids before they come out to spend time with the bees is that I tell them they have to take a deep breath and that's going to calm them enough not to not to get stung and that, that's, a, that's a thing if you're uncomfortable um, if you're anxious, if you come out and you've just had a really hard day, then you'll probably get stung more often than if you've had a relaxing morning and you come out with, um, with the bees in a calm sort of way. The communal life in the hive, I think a big other misconception is that it's the boy bees that do everything. Um, so the boys protect the hive and this and that, or the males we should say, and the male bees uh, really have very few roles in the hive. Um, they have the role of being the dad and that's about it. So they don't forage, they don't protect the hive, they don't take care of the queen. They're really, having too many males is a bit extra weight for the hive. It's really the females that do all of the jobs and are called worker bees because of how hard they work. I see God in, in that it is an incredibly complex uh, bee society, people call it, is um, so remarkable um, the way the way the queen um, controls the the hive, how they they kind of take her cues um, to do to do their work, how well it's organized, even the the shape and the consistency of the cells that they they um, you know lay their eggs in and and hold water in and put honey into and pollen like it's just so incredibly efficient but it's also um, really remarkable to learn all the different parts of, of what they do. Um, and, and how everything is interconnected, right? The bees are not just going out and, and taking something for themselves. They're going out and um, they're in, in relationship with all the, the th well, with all the things they interact with. Um, and, and those things, those uh, trees or those plants, often need the bee to pollinate them and so it's just it's this beautiful back and forth there's a lot of space that's not used in the urban environment um, that might be through ways for hydro poles or uh, garden clubs that are on old land that aren't used parks the sides of green spaces like in Windsor Park that no one uses this this big green space um, but putting in garden plots and putting in beehives and stuff is not really allowed so part of the rules um, state that you have to have ownership of you have to have owner's permission of the land and there's no way for the city to give you that so there's a lot of great um whether they're long-standing or they're for newcomer groups or whatever these garden plots are fantastic and could totally benefit from hives but there's just no framework to allow it we do an okay job of it in winnipeg by bee friendly planting and chemical usage uh that can always continue to improve um, urban orchards and you know the city planting a diversity of trees that some of them have edible things that the bees can pollinate is also great. Uh, people who aren't able to host hives or manage their own hives, uh, either of those options, they can still do a lot by pushing politicians with either their vote or letters and sort of pushing for good po bee friendly policy and good urban food production policy. Like, it doesn't have to be bees. This was just an example that we fell in love with and that we saw many other cities had better policies than us. Um, so that's, that's a way. Purchasing local honey from beekeepers that are producing in your area is always great. And avoiding going to the grocery store to buy it because there's so many great local, not even necessarily urban, but Manitoban or Canadian options. Um, and then planting and uh, maintaining your garden or your green space with bee-friendly uh, flowers and, and sort of like management. So thinking critically of when or if you need to use a chemical, uh, a pesticide for example, that might be harmful to the bees, or if you can plant a diversity of, of flowers instead of just your, the single type, your favorite flower, whatever that is. Bees love a diversity of plants. They love things that give nectar through and pollen throughout the season, so they have a nutrition source all season. And we also say that, for example, in this area, having a, keeping a little bit of wild space in the city, uh, so maybe lesser mowed or managed um, bits, really allow nesting areas for native pollinators. I think that uh, we need to start with understanding bees ourselves. So once we understand the bees ourselves, 
um, we are we're gonna be able to offer bees to people and I don't mean physically I just mean like offer the idea of urban beekeeping to our neighbors um, to the people that that have fear and that that say oh I, I don't think that should be done in the city um, I think that our understanding will put us at ease and once we we have that then our neighbors might actually hear what we have to say about maybe about pollination sure but but maybe more about um, how we're going to manage the bees uh, but once I knew more about how to keep bees uh, how bees work I think I could be excited about it and share it with people uh, in a way that got them inspired and relaxed we've really appreciated being able to partner with law, large organizations where they give us and small organizations where they give us um, access to their their sort of social media reach or their clientele or workers so that there's almost like an immediate audience for the conversations that we would like to have. I think that we'd like to see this continue and the uptake in community partners uh, continue and people to be more um, at ease with having a few bees in, the, in their neighborhoods and stuff. Um, directing your resources and allowing access to your space uh, towards these projects especially in times where there's maybe like economic crisis and stuff can be really challenging. So we're hoping that this will become for Bee Project and for Urban Beekeeping that it will become one of many aspects that uh, that grow in Manitoba to make Manitoba have a really strong local food scene.